So moving on to the problems we're having with the transmission. As you know, I chose a 6L90 transmission, which is the biggest GM transmission, six speed. It's got a much larger tunnel um, than the 4L80, 4L60, 4L80 series transmission. And the main problem lies right here. The 4L60s and 80s taper quite a bit more, and these transmissions will go right up in this truck with no modifications. This one has this big fat body with all the extra gears in it that has to be accommodated. And as it turns out, with the angle that I've chosen for the engine, um, and the fact that I want to have a nearly zero driveline angle for a lowered style truck, or at least zero to negative, say, two degrees, uh, two inches or three inches, um, I'm going to have to push up the, um, the tunnel just a tiny amount. And I'm going to show you how I do this. This is a very simple way I do it so that I don't have to move a lot of metal. And in the end, I'm actually going to fiberglass the tunnel shut because I like to work with fiberglass more than steel on this little thin stuff. Um, not sparks in the truck, don't no risk catching your carpet on fire. In all honesty, I'll lay that carpet back with some carpet tape and nobody will ever know it's been touched. So, first thing I do is I make my marks for my tunnel and I actually mocked up the transmission in place and I realized the transmission's about a half inch low based on this area right here. So I just lined it up and I'm gonna provide measurements of my tunnel for this 6L90 style transmission on the website. But if you're using a 4L80 or 4L60, you're not gonna have this problem. Okay, so I'm just going to basically drill enough marking holes in the tunnel itself up through the truck so that I can go up top and cut my carpet out. Um, so once I've drilled enough marking holes to identify my area, the next thing I do is I take a handful of uh, high-tech drywall screws and I just run those up through the holes and pin the carpet down inside, okay? So you just run those all the way up and you keep running them until it pins the carpet down on the inside. And once I've done that, I go up inside the truck and I basically connect the dots by cutting the carpet dot to dot in a way that I can fold the carpet back and get to the tunnel area without having to actually cut the carpet out. Um, now that I've done that, I pull the carpet all the way back And I take just a regular four and a half inch grinder with a cutoff wheel, and I'm going to just do a cross hatch cut down the center and identify all as many as you need. If you have to bigger tunnel, more cuts, obviously. But what I'm trying to achieve is that it loosens up the tunnel. Okay. So now that I've managed to loosen up the tunnel area that I'm interested in, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently take my fingers and I'm just going to push that tunnel up some. Okay, now remember my goal is not to move much of this metal out of the way. So what I'll do is I'm just going to gently form my tunnel. Now this is a lot different than the stuff you see on Spike TV where they cut the entire tunnel out and replace it. But they have English wheels and other ways to bend metal that I just simply don't want to mess with. I think they do a lot of cutting because it makes good for good TV, but I don't think it's really all that necessary. Okay, now you can see with just a four and a half inch angle grinder and some drill points and some marks, I've managed to now create <clears throat> enough tunnel that my transmission will actually clear. Um, I'll take a hammer and a dolly and I'll just round this up so it so more or less matches and I'll round this end up so it more or less matches. But I'm gonna use a little trick. I'm gonna put the transmission in first, push it up against there and see how much I actually have to do because my goal is to minimize the amount of tunnel intrusion in here. Now, if you look, even with a small home welder, it wouldn't take much of a piece of sheet metal to bend over that and weld it back in. And like I was saying, I actually prefer to work with fiberglass. So what I'm gonna do when I'm all done is lay a sheet of fiberglass over that and pour resin on it and let it harden and then build it up three or four more layers until it's repaired and then come in here and caulk all that with some body caulk to close it up. If you've done any car audio, ever worked with fiberglass, um, it's definitely a preferred way to do it rather than try to get in the truck and weld. So anyway, so that's what we've come up with. Um, 
if you the only thing the only thing I've had to do to this truck to get this big transmission to clear is I've actually had to make some small cuts and hammer back the pinch welds. Um, if I were looking for a show quality vehicle where you put mirrors underneath and everybody's looking at it, I might clean that up and uh, lay a piece of uh, steel across that and weld it in. But in this truck, I'm not all that worried about it, so I just pushed it out of my way so I could get to the bolt holes. So anyway, that's the work we've done underneath the tunnel to make it clear. That's as simple as it gets. This is Scott from LSStack.com. Thanks.